Good afternoon, everybody. We are uh, so grateful to be here for another afternoon Bible class, and we want to give a quick shout out to our uh, senior pastor, George Rayford, and our technical team here at New Community Baptist Church, Brother Jermaine Simmons, and those that work with him. Uh, good afternoon, and welcome again to our afternoon Bible class. We want to thank God again for another opportunity to be here and to share in God's word. Let us have a quick word of prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we come thanking you once again for this another time, God, that's been set aside that we can share in your word. God, we pray, Lord, that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart will be acceptable uh, in your sight, God. Oh, God, you are our strength and our Redeemer, God. We ask that this word uh, that we are going to teach on this afternoon might encourage us, God, just to believe what you said in your word. Now, in Jesus' name, we come thanking you, and everybody said, Amen. So, this afternoon, we are going to uh, look into God's word. We're going to look at the 24th chapter of the Gospel of, of according to Luke, and we're going to look at the 13th through the 17th verse. The Bible says, Now behold, two of them were traveling the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together of all the things which had happened. So it was while they were conversing and reasoning that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. And he said to them, What kind of conversation is this that you are having with one another as you walk and are sad? So, in this text, Luke, he cuts to another resurrection account featuring two disciples, one of whom was named Cleophas. We learned that in verse number 18. These two were traveling to Emmaus, a town that was located about seven miles from Jerusalem. As they were discussing what had happened that weekend, the risen Christ began walking alongside them. We understand that from the 14th and 15th verse. However, they did not know who he was, for they were prevented from recognizing him, says the 16th verse. So he asked them what they were discussing. They stopped walking and looked discouraged. Their unbelief prevented them from recognizing him. Beloved, I want to tell you today that our unbelief can stop us from receiving the revelations that God has for us. What do I mean by that? The revelation of the revealed word of God concerning our life. These men and women, we believe that it was Cleophas and his wife. They talked about everything that had happened the weekend that Jesus was crucified. And they were discouraged because the reality of their discouragement came because they did not believe what Jesus said in his word in the ninth chapter of the book of Acts, verse number 22, Jesus said that he was going to be handed over to sinful men and crucified, but on the third day that he would rise. And this is the third day afternoon that these disciples are walking on the road to Emmaus and they are discouraged because they believe in their heart that everything that Jesus said to them 
was taken away from them by the men that crucified their Lord. They believed in who Jesus was. But what they did not believe, and the reason why they were discouraged, because things didn't go as according to plan, according to them. But the reason why the plan didn't go as planned is because they did not believe in what Jesus had told them. Sometimes when life goes the wrong way and our plans don't always work out as we think they should, we began to get discouraged. And here in the word of God today, I wanted to share with you all how two people who believed in the word of God, they even said in the text that these men had treated Jesus unjustly and they had crucified him. All of that was true. But where they went wrong at is their unbelief again in what the word of God and what Jesus had previously told them and again in the ninth chapter. So unbelief, beloved, can cause us that we might not receive revelation from the revealed word of God concerning my life. Now these disciples on the road to Emmaus, they felt like that all of the plans that they had made they felt like everything that Jesus had promised them was to be no more. And simply because they didn't believe in what he said. Unbelief can stop us, even today, from walking in the power of the resurrection. In other words, not allowing sin to have power in my life. Because remember now, unbelief is a sin. Unbelief can cause us to become short-sighted. The reason why I say that is because these brothers, they began to, and they were discouraged because they knew that the women had been to the tomb earlier that day and Jesus was gone. They knew this because word had gotten back. But what they failed to remember, and they just didn't believe it, you all, that Jesus told them on the third day that he would rise again. Unbelief can also cause us to be discouraged. You saw in the text where Jesus said that as he was walking, he noticed that they were sad. Unbelief can cause disappointment in our life. It can cause us to be hopeless. We know that the Bible encourages us in the 42nd division of the Psalm around verse number five. It asks us the question, why are we cast down, O my soul? And why are you disturbed or unsettled? Put your hope in God, for I shall yet praise him the help of my countenance and my God. My countenance is how I look, how I present myself to the world as a follower of Jesus Christ. These two on the road to Emmaus, they were talking amongst themselves, but Jesus, like Joseph, when he went down into the dungeon with the butcher and the baker in, in the book of Genesis, he noticed that they were sad as well because all of their dreams seemed to be dashed. But that was not the case. And as we look at this wonderful text after the resurrection, how uh, these disciples seemingly had lost hope because they just didn't believe in God's word. And I want to encourage us on this afternoon and ask us the question, what is restraining us? And at the end of the day, if we're honest with ourselves, 
It's the same thing that restrained these two disciples from being able to recognize who Jesus was in this 24th chapter. It was simply that they, they did not believe when things got tough, when things went the way they didn't think they should have gone, when fear came to visit them, they didn't believe in the written word that Jesus had previously spoke. Remember again, in 922, he said, you must understand that I am going to be handed over to sinful men and they're going to crucify me. But on the third day, I'm going to rise. Now we know in our own life experience, when fear comes in, sickness comes in, distress pressures of life come in. We don't always remember God's word uh, at that particular time. But, but, but I want to encourage us today that Jesus said in his word, he said in his word, in the ninth chapter of the book of Matthew, around the 28th verse, the Bible says after Jesus had entered the house, the blind men came to him and Jesus said to them, do you believe that I am able to do this? And they responded to Jesus, yes, Lord. And I want to say to you that Isaiah, uh, in the 61st chapter, verse number one and two, Isaiah foretold that, that the Messiah would come. And the brothers over in Matthew 9, they told Jesus that they believed that he was able to give them their sight back. But their faith, because they had the book of Isaiah back then, the book of Isaiah said concerning the Messiah who would come in the future, but Jesus said, quoting Isaiah 61, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Jesus went on to say in that fourth chapter of the book of Luke, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, praise the Lord. He has sent me also to proclaim liberty to the captives and to recover sight to the blind, that's physically blind and spiritually blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so as the disciples back in Luke 24, as they walked along the road, and, and again, uh, things seemed to be, uh, had come apart for them. And they were believers because they had they claimed that their Lord, again, had been mistreated and done unjustly. But as believers, what we can gather from this after the resurrection, after we have, glory to God, celebrated Easter with one another. We've had a great time in the Lord celebrating the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. We can sometime, even after the glories of Resurrection Day, we can sometime become like these disciples and not really believe in what the Word of God says. When sometimes misunderstandings cause us to be in disagreement with folk. Sometimes we things just don't go our way. But we have to learn something from this wonderful text that the Lord left us. We have to learn that the Lord said that he saw that they were sad. And again, the only reason why they were sad is because they did not believe in the revealed word of God that Jesus had previously spoken unto them. You and I, no matter what happens in our life, and none of us, all of us want things to go well for us. We have to believe in what the word of God has said to us because unbelief will cause us not to believe in the plans that God has planned for our life. 
Unbelief will cause you and I to become discouraged. Unbelief will cause us to be suspicious of folk when we don't need to be. And beloved, as I close today, I want to encourage somebody to understand that believing in God's word is the way that a believer can stay on track. You see, because unbelief comes because things happen to shake us out of our comfort zone. And when things happen to us, we begin to look at our circumstance more than we're looking at the one who is going to order our steps in the Lord and the one who, who, who has called us to where we are supposed to be. So let's not, uh, let's learn today from our friends in the text that we're going to believe what Jesus has said no matter what's happened in our life. We know that the Bible says that now faith, today faith, is the substance of things that are hoped for, but they are the evidence of things that are not seen. At that particular time, uh, uh, it, it, outside of Jerusalem, on the, the road to Emmaus, these brothers, it did not look like things were going to happen like the Lord said they were going to happen. But I want to encourage somebody today. Don't let unbelief steal from us what Jesus gave us on that wonderful resurrection morning. Don't let uh, uh, how things look uh, turn around what Jesus has said in his word. The Bible, the Lord has told us that the joy of the Lord that's what the word of God says. And I have to believe it no matter the things that happen and, and the things that go sideways in my life. I have to realize that I am serving a resurrected Lord. And I have to also realize that what his word said, I must believe it. Because if I don't believe his word, beloved, I don't have anything. The world and all that is in the world, it can take my heart and it can, it can break my heart and it can do all sorts of things if I don't believe what the Lord has said in his word. Jesus said that I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And pertaining to my life, everything that God said in his word, beloved, it is to bless your life. It is to keep us in times of trouble. It is to encourage us when we are discouraged. And I just want to share with us, do not allow unbelief to keep us from recognizing and receiving Jesus in the times in our life where we need to embrace the Lord fully. Because the times that we're living in right now, inflation is higher than it's ever been. But we got a God that said that he would provide for us no matter what. And so I want you all to go and share with somebody and let somebody know that I'm going to believe in what God has said in his word. The Bible said this as I close. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word will remain forever. And I want you all to know today. That just as Jesus told them that he was going to rise on the third day, he surely did. And he rose, as the Bible said, with all power in his hands. And in that 28th chapter of Matthew, once he got his disciples together, he called them all together and he commissioned them. And he said to them, he said, all power is being given unto me, and in heaven and earth, this is after the resurrection. He says, now I want you to go unto all the world and preach and teach and make disciples of men. And a disciple is somebody who's going to believe in what God's word says. And not only is he going to believe it or she's going to believe it, they're going to, to, to pattern our lives and let the word of God shape our life and our thinking so that we'll be productive for ourselves, for the Lord Jesus, for the kingdom of God. Now, until next time, I want y'all to remember, 
Believe in what the word of God said. And may the Lord bless you real good. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we come thanking you again for your word, for helping us, Lord, uh, with our uh, brothers in the text that we saw uh, in the 24th chapter of the book of Luke. Teaching us, Lord, that unbelief can cause us and restrain us from receiving from the Lord. God, thank you for again leaving us your word, showing us after the glorious resurrection how we still can sometimes stumble if we don't believe in what your word has said. Now, God, we thank you. In Jesus' strong name, we ask that everybody would receive this word. And God, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we ask it all. And everybody said, amen.